Hi and welcome to Josh's Bookish Voyage. In this video I'm going to be discussing the books that I chose to read during the January a year readathon, read -thon, where I chose to read as many red covers as I could during one week. Uh, this is the first video I ever recorded. I've since made some creative decisions to hopefully be more presentable, but for the sake of sincerity, but mostly for time that went into editing it, I'm going to be presenting to you the original video. Let's get going. So I chose this readathon because I did not know of any others going on. So these are the books that I decided to read. I had a very ambitious goal going in, and I found myself really fighting my stride and doing really well. And so I ended up reading, I think, even more than I originally had intended. The first book I read was The Red Tent by Anita Diamant. This is a book from the perspective of Dinah, I believe it's pronounced, which is the sister of Jacob and daughter of Joseph. Those two names will be switched. Basically, that they are two figure, male figures in Genesis. And basically, this is her telling of her life. It's a female perspective of life in that time. I chose to read this because I had added it to my TBR years ago when I was looking at feminist novels that I'd like to read and I had not read it yet because I was just so intimidated by it. It's, it's literary fiction and it's historical and I don't always respond very well to historical and so I've been really hesitant and ultimately chose to read this because I found another copy exactly like this. It's a really nice copy and I gave it to my mom for Christmas and so of course I wanted to read it so that uh, when she reads it, we can talk about it. I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it four out of five stars. I thought it was a very effective story, telling the narrative of her life, but more importantly, using her and her mothers as a way of illustrating what it's like to be a woman in this time. I thought it would be more religious, or rather more Christian, and it really wasn't at all. I'm not sure if they even, if they do even mention Jehovah or God. It's, it's in passing. Their religion is something that preceded that. And it was really fascinating to getting to explore that and their way of, of living. And more importantly, it's also really exciting just to see another perspective of Dina's life than the one that is proposed in the Bible where she is raped and then avenged by her brothers. I guess I shouldn't spoil the book, should I? Let's just say that the narrative of the Bible is still here. But we find is it is not it is not the way that the Bible would would have us believe. Rather, it is much more a woman being independent, and that is the well where they have a problem. Altogether, I really enjoyed it. Happy I read it. The second book that I read uh, was Robin. The author of Robin is Dave Izakov. I was looking on Book Outlet and I saw this book. I got really excited and I thought, but I want to read this. I want to know more about his life. After reading it, I think I gave it four and a half stars. I will say that even though I, I liked it a lot, I was disappointed in the sense that I was expecting to learn more than I did. What we get is a great overview of his life, giving us insight into his mind at that point. That being said, a lot of the details felt like things I already knew. Um, I still think it was really interesting and beneficial to have it presented in this structured way. Nevertheless, I was hoping to, to learn more. I think it's still understandable that it didn't provide too much in his personal life because there is some respect to be had for him, and I, and I can understand that and appreciate it. So the next book I read was Girl on Fire by Robin Rosserman, and I really enjoyed this. Coming fresh off of Robin, I was worried I wouldn't like this. One, because I just hadn't heard much about it. I was going purely on Books and Lala's recommendation, so I didn't have much excitement beyond that. And I was just so disappointed, not from Robin, but from having to leave it. Because um, with its conclusion, it just reminded me of his death, and it was just such, so depressing and saddening, and I'm going through a breakup, and so I, all this is going through my head. I was like, how can I possibly enjoy the next book? And luckily, Rosserman, did a fantastic job of distracting me from all of that with the teenage angst that is exploring this novel so much drama and I am here for it I absolutely adored this book it was so much fun highly recommend hit four to five stars the next book that I read was Scythe which I absolutely loved let me just say I don't read a lot of YA just because I have trouble getting into it I guess 
I, for whatever reason, maybe I'm picking the wrong books. And so I was worried that I wouldn't like this, but I had heard so many great things about it that it was hard to say no to it. Dear God, did I love it. I have not wanted to finish a book so fast and so long, but I, now I also want to get the next book, which I already bought, and read it as soon as I can. Uh, if you haven't heard about it, it's about a, a world where people don't die because um, we've conquered illnesses and other types of tragedies. And because of that, population control means we have to hire these sides to do the job for us. And Neil Schusterman explores this in a way that I found profound and is really interesting. The next book that I read, I believe, was book four of the Earth Seed Suck. And I'm on book four. I'm trying to read one a month. It's basically my way of getting through this massive book. Um, and I will say that I haven't loved most of these stories. I think you give them three stars usually. Book four, I would say, is probably my one of, if not my favorite one that I've read so far. It's still only got three and a half stars. That said, it f it followed a character that we introduced in book two, which was also the only other book that I kind of uh, kind of just really enjoyed, as opposed to just being fine. And we see her in her relationship with the main character, who is what the majority of the original trilogy follows. And personally. I didn't care about his storyline, and I like how this book, the book four at least, isn't really about him. It's more about the female main character, whose name I forget, um, and it sort of goes into the fact that I'm not that excited about this series. An example of me reading a book that I'm not as excited for, I want to try and get something from this, even though I don't think I would love it. I This isn't a book about why we read what we read, okay? I'm an adult. I can read what I want. The next book that I read was Underland by Robin, or rather Robert McFarland. And this was a book that I was so highly anticipated for. I heard about it from Olive, but I will link it down below. And I was so amazed by this cover. And also, she described it as an exploration of all things Underland, from mythology to geology. I thought it was such a fascinating thing. I wanted to have the opportunity to explore the different types of underworlds or underlands and, and see how what role they played in human history. Much to my disappointment, this book is not that. It is more, much, more, much more of a travel book. I did not realize going in that was the case, but he basically has, I think, three or four regions that he goes to, and he finds some convoluted but very abstract thing that is related to the underworld or underland, and he discusses it. except. It isn't really an exploration of the science of the underworld, nor really a broad exploration of the mythological exploration. It's very esoteric and specific in general, in a way that I just was not interested in. I had trouble following and caring. His writing is very well done. I mean, he, he knows how to describe the worlds that he's at, but it isn't enough to save it for me. I ended up DNF of this at 70%. 70 that was a conscious effort to make it that far because I did not want to get rid of this book. Normally I wouldn't keep it if I wasn't going to finish it, but this cover is just so damn beautiful I don't want to get rid of it. So I chose to push through past 50% to 70%. So I can at least I read most of it, enough to know for sure that I just do not want to finish it. Um, it is a beautiful cover. The next book that I read and finished was How We Know It Isn't So by Thomas Gilvich. I think this was post published in 1990-something. It's, it's clearly an old book by the style. And this is basically the book about human psychology, human fallibility, and how we tend to convince ourselves of things that just aren't true. And it's also about how we might go about addressing Creepy as fuck. No, I live by myself. <sighs> okay. And how we need to be aware of how we can trick ourselves, basically, because there are so many ways in which we do that. I have a big passion for skepticism and science and for being very aware of how we are keen to trick ourselves in every little area. And that was just an amazing book. I think I gave it five out of five stars. I read some reviews saying it's nothing new. But I still think it's beneficial for everyone to read, even if you've heard of it before, because there are so many ways in which we can trick ourselves. It's beneficial to explore different discussions of these biases, even if it's a little repetitive, so that we might better able ourselves, prepare ourselves for attacking them head on. 
So a good follow-up to that was The Mismeasure of Man, which is a non-fiction book by Stephen Jay Gould. And I've been wanting to read his books for a while because I know he's such a big person in the skeptic community. It was a, It is about how scientists have let their bias, their racial bigoted bias, drive their research and findings for years, hundreds of years, to get to the conclusions that support their bigoted biases, from racial to sexist to xenophobic biases or, or, or bigotries, basically letting that drive us in how we do our science. And I think this is a really poignant in following up to How We Know It Isn't So, because How We Know It Isn't So really gets to the point that science is probably our best tool at weeding out these biases of overcoming them and, and getting through them. And I think this is a good example, not that science doesn't work, because it does work. I will fight anyone on that. <laughs> that even science is fallible, and especially when it comes to people who have a motivation to prove something that they have a invested interest in. Bigotry is a big investment. This was a necessary novel for me to read. However, I, I can't say it was the best book. It mostly details a series of examples where this type of bigotry and bias has been uh, used in science to to prove a point that the people are invested in. But it doesn't really create a good narrative of how it all comes together beyond just the, the basic principle. Um, and because it's just a bunch of examples, it's hard to retain individual examples without them all just sort of blurring together where I get the main point, but I don't really take away as much as I would like to. In that sense, it I feel like it was necessary to acknowledge and, and recognize that these exist in our past and the scientific history uh, and scientific progress. But at the same time, I, I wish he had made a more concerted effort to help us better appreciate the overarching themes and overarching uh, point to each example. So I gave this, I think, three and a half out of five stars, a book I didn't hate, but I just, I wish was written better in a way that was more engaging for me. The last book that I finished was Betty White's If You Ask Me, and of course you won't. I read this because I bought it, and I sort of regretted it after I bought it, but then I had it, and I thought, you know what, I'm doing a readathon. If I have time, I'll get to it. It's really short. If you look, they're broken into individual sections, and each section, the pages are just so constrained. It's not nearly as, as long as it actually looks. This is a two hour long audiobook. Um, and I, I enjoyed it. I ended up going from the book to the audiobook because I was short on time. Um, and I think it was better for that. I think part of the experience is just getting to hear Betty White narrate this herself. But the individual examples when I was just reading them um, physically, in a physical copy, I didn't much love it. I mean, I love Betty White, so I love the what I would, that I get to hear her talk to me. But at the same time, her examples are all so short and they seem so general in their discussion. And I, I hate criticizing someone I love so much, but I guess I, I didn't find the essays very informative or all that interesting most of the time. Um, I Again, I, I found it more enjoyable after I moved to audio, where I got, it was a performance in addition to the content. Uh, I, I want to say I gave this four stars. I was just disappointed because I was hoping for more substance. Which sounds harsh, but uh, I, I still love Betty White, and I, I'm, I probably will still read another one of her books because I, because of the lack of substance, I want to hear more about her life. And, and that concludes the books that I read for the January a yearathon. You might notice that some of them are kind of cheats. Underland is kind of a mix of colors. Um, How we know it isn't so, and Mismeasure of Men it isn't exactly red, but. I went with it because I wanted to read them. And then Robin was white, but if you look underneath the dust jacket, it is red. Um, and Scythe isn't entirely red, but that's okay. Uh, again, this is just for fun. And I did have fun. I w had several... Underland was the only one that I really just... 
disliked extremely. Even the ones that disappointed me, I still am glad I read them and I enjoyed them. And then the ones that I did like, I just really loved them. Scythe, of course, being the best one. Then How I Know It Isn't So and um, Robin were still both very uh, important books to me. I, I, I'm thankful to the people who help run a year -thon. I will definitely type the Twitter below. I'll try and find the individuals too, and if they have a, whatever they have, I'll try and tag them below too. Um, I should say that I have a blog. Check it out, jjoshh.com. Josh from the future again. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe so you can check out the rest of my cool videos that I have planned.